So I started getting these messages from people on my team. Vision, this is unbelievable. This is the most important and powerful meditation I've ever listened to. Another person said, this is the greatest audio ever on the Mind Valley app. And what they were talking about was this particular audio. It's called Hypnotic Trance Bliss by Paul McKenna. And apparently, if you listen to this audio five days in a row, it permanently rewires your brain to have greater stress resilience without elevating levels of stress and elevating levels of anxiety. Now, I know that sounds remarkable, right? But such is the power of the subconscious mind and such is the power of hypnotherapy. But this audio has now become my favorite because this is what happened to me. So I did the instructions as Paul McKenna suggested. I listened to the audio for five days in a row. And at the end of that week, what I noticed is that I could run multiple projects. I could have insane amount of complexity or even business issues coming up, but it wouldn't cause my brain to go into stress mode. And that's what this audio is going to do for you as well. So listen carefully because in this episode of the Mind Valley Show, I'm going to bring you Paul McKenna. You're going to understand how your brain functions in terms of stress and anxiety. And you're going to understand how so much of that is a belief system that can be healed and fixed at the subconscious level. And then we're going to actually play this remarkable audio for you. This is going to be a life altering experience for you. And I'm not exaggerating that in any way because this audio changed my life. So Paul, before we get started, it would be it would be wrong of me to not talk about your incredible accomplishments right now. Firstly, Paul McKenna has a PhD. He's an international best-selling author whose books have sold over 10 million copies and has been translated into 32 languages. Paul is celebrated for his extraordinary ability to ignite dramatic change in people's behaviors and lives through tools and techniques rooted in fields like hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming. He's appeared on TV shows, including The Ellen DeGeneres Show, Good Morning America, The Dr. Oz Show, Rachel Ray, Anderson Live, and many more. He's one of the most sought after hypnotherapists in the world and has been recognized by the Times of London as one of the world's most important modern self-help gurus. And what we are going to be covering today with this brilliant, brilliant man is how to rewire your brain to create permanent changes where stress and anxiety will not shake you or bother you as they have done before. Paul, welcome to the Mind Valley Show. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Vishen, as always. Paul, explain to us about stress and anxiety and, and in particular, this process that you have to permanently change the way people process stress and anxiety and overwhelm. Well, at the moment, uh, the world is going through uh, a psychological pandemic on the back of the biological one. And stress, fear, anxiety, panic is rampant, understandably, because the world has been going through tremendous changes. In fact, if you hadn't had some stress and anxiety, you know, in the last few years, it'd be something wrong. Uh, the trouble is, though, people have gotten really good at it. They practiced it. So they can catastrophize quite quickly. You open a newspaper, Paper, you turn on the TV, you know, you're under attack. It's the virus, it's the war, it's the economy. And so understandably, people are producing that fight or flight response way too often. And the problem with that is it leads to all kinds of physical and psychological problems. 50% of the reason why people show up at the doctor is stress related. And also, um, it's just uncomfortable. You see, stress and fear have a message. They say, be prepared. If I'm about to step off the curb and there's a bus coming, I want fear to pull me back and keep me alive. I just don't want to live in it. And unfortunately, because uh, um, our media is addicted to sensation, and indeed there are genuine changes, environmental changes happening in the world, things we need to be aware of, we're constantly getting these messages that we're under attack. And so uh, I've worked at the sharp end, people who have suffered extreme trauma and, and uh, PTSD, but also through to people who are just experiencing too much stress and panic in their everyday lives. 
and developed strategies and also taken techniques from the best new modern psychological areas, right? Uh, the real breakthrough areas that can help somebody very quickly retrain their brain so that they're more capable, they're more resilient. They're able to perceive and handle threats and problems, but not be overwhelmed by them. So they make better decisions, uh, they feel better, they enjoy more of life. Because you see, when, when you're in that sort of state of heightened anxiety, all your bandwidth of thinking is taken up with survival thoughts. And so when you reduce that, there's more room for all the good stuff, creativity, joy, bliss, happiness, etc. So it seems that in our modern world, right, we're no longer, no longer concerned about eaten, being eaten alive as a hunter-gatherer by a wild animal, but our body still perceives threats. And those threats might be that project that's long overdue or a long to-do list on our calendar or the fact that we are late for an important meeting and traffic isn't moving. And these things trigger this biological response. And I remember, I remember reading this. I, I don't know how true it is, but I remember reading that, that American doctors or a panel of American doctors suggested that 50% of all doctor visits are primarily due to stress causing some condition in our body to break down. Yes, that, that's a true statistic. And we're likely to see that sadly become even higher because there are so many changes that our world is going through. Now, some of those are positive things, but generally people like um, the familiar. In studies where people are asked what they most fear, uh, the unknown is, is always up there in the top 10, sometimes higher than death. So, you know, some of the changes that are going on in the world are good, but uh, even though they are, people are overwhelmed by them because they have to adjust and, and adapt to you know, a new environment, for example. So, so what I've done with um, the, the techniques that I've gathered is I've put them into a system that's very easy to understand because um, you know far too many people open a book and it's full of psychobabble or listen to an audio program and it's got all sorts of technical language. Mm. And you know, sometimes people say to me, you know, you, you talk a lot of just common sense, don't you? And I say, Thank you. Do you know how hard that is <laughs> to take really complicated psychological um, te techniques and to present them in a very user-friendly way? So, so I want to ask you this question, right? Because I've, I've worked with you, Paul, and I had a health condition and you hypnotized me. And in 20 minutes, that health condition disappeared. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm, I'm not at liberty to share what that health condition was, but I thought I was going to have to be on medication forever. It was fixed in 20 minutes and I was and, and I was mind blown. And that's when I started, you know, working with you more and we produced a program together called Everyday Bliss. And that program sits in Mind Valley. And it is in this program that we release this powerful audio that people are talking about. It's called the hypnotic trance. This is the 23 minute audio that rewires your brain in terms of how your brain perceives stress and anxiety. But tell me if this is true. Everyday Bliss has a ton of lectures, mm -hmm. then it has the audio, a ton of lectures, then it has the audio. You teach some other techniques to help yourself relax. Mm. But you told me this once as we were out having drinks. You said, Vision, all of those lectures don't matter. Mm. If you just listen to the audio for five days in a row, you will have a permanently rewiring of your brain on stress. But you said that people don't believe it's possible. People refuse to believe that change can happen so fast. So you have to create all of these lectures just so people go oh okay it's a it's a four and a half hour course yeah. and they believe somehow that because it's four and a half hours now they believe that it's going to work right is that true yes it is i mean part of the problem we have with modern psychological techniques is they work so fast and they're so deceptively simple that people don't believe that they're going to last or that, that they're real they're some sort right. of you know magic trick um and um to what you were just saying if you do anything for five days, you're going to be different. But if you listen to the hypnotic trance that I made for Everyday Bliss, you're going to be super different because it's not just that you relax, you feel calm, your burdens are lifted, and you feel really wonderful. It's that I, I make it so you listen with headphones. So some messages are for the right brain and some for the left. You see, the left brain thinks in terms of logic, linear, and sequence. The right brain in terms of abstract and metaphor. And so when you listen to uh, messages simultaneously for the right and left brain, you're communicating with the whole brain. So this is a very sophisticated matrix of messages that go deep into the unconscious mind 
that literally change the way you perceive life. And the audio is weird AF. Um, when you listen to it, you have a voice speaking here and a voice speaking here, and you're telling weird stories. Mm. And there's this 3D dimensional sound, okay? And I'm going to ask you to explain all of that in a moment before we get into the audio, because guys, you're in for something that's almost like almost like a um, an acid trip in a way, which is why you cannot be doing this while you're driving. So please, please, please remember that. But Paul, what I want to ask you is this, is it true that all of the lecture and all of the stuff you put in the, the, the course is unnecessary, but you had to put it there for padding because people's belief system refuses to tell them that something as complex as stress and anxiety can be healed with hypnotherapy mm. in just five listens of this one audio? Well, it, it, I think to say it's unnecessary um, isn't quite the case, but you're right. It could all be done right. with just the trance, you see. But some people, they like to have things explained to them first, and they like to then have that reinforced and reinforced before they're actually ready to make a change. So, um, you know, people change at a different rate. Some people are incremental changes. Right. They like it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And that's why, you know, the course takes place over a period of time. But it is possible for it to take place in just a few minutes. I mean, I, I, I wrote that's, a, that's what I found. I, I found that one listen of this audio immediately shifted me. It, it transformed the way I was showing up for the next two days. I did a second listen and I felt that feeling. And then after I did, did my third and then my fourth and my fifth, it just became my new baseline state. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I think people really enjoy is they don't lose any of their ability. Because again, people who are highly stressed um, and anxious, very often they're achievers, very right. often they're perfectionists. You know, it's not necessarily uh, one end of, of the scale of disorder. It's actually something that makes people really good at what they do. But if it's all they do is get stressed, anxious, and worry, and they don't give themselves recovery time and let their body do its internal housekeeping, as it were. That's when psychological and physi physiological problems occur. So the idea with this is that um, uh, is is that you can change really fast if you want to, or you can use it a bit at a time to change at the, the pace of, of life that's I right see. for you. So what people are left with is instead of, they don't lose their edge, but they're left in this state of relaxed alertness, mm. right? And, and I find that that's what people are, are, are after. They say, you know, I need my stress because I need to be motivated. And I go, well, we're not going to take away any of your motivation. In fact, when you're not freaking out, worrying about things and preparing for emergencies that are never going to happen, you're actually in better shape. Okay, that's an important point. I, I never thought of that. So if we take away one stress, it's not going to make you less productive. It's yeah. not going to take away your entrepreneurial drive or your yeah. motivation. But it's going to but it's going to put you in a better, more peaceful baseline state so you can approach the work that you're doing with more creativity, yes, more focus. Yeah. And um and and I guess connecting the dots far easier because your brain isn't on panic mode. Yes, that's exactly right. 100%. Okay. Now, before we get to the explanation of the audio, explain the difference between stress and anxiety because this audio helps alleviate both. So anxiety is uh, is usually there in the background. It's like a feeling of foreboding. You know, it's that uncomfortable feeling that you've forgotten something, something bad could happen, you know, you've missed a detail. And so it, it leaves you on edge and it's sort of, it's there all the time. Whereas stress um, tends to be uh, when we're suddenly put in a high pressure situation. So you suddenly have to give mm -hmm. a presentation or you're cut up in traffic and you know, you're gonna be late and, and and so you go into that sort of hyper state of, of almost panic, if you like. And so what this trance does is it addresses both. As you say quite rightly, it takes your baseline down so that you, you've still got the ability, if you need to, right? Um, if you need to get, uh, you know, panicked right. and worried, you can do. But you're just less likely to live in it. And as you rightly say, when you're in a state of relaxed alertness, you're more in control. Because this is the big issue with people who uh, like to be stressed is they want to be in control. They're usually high-powered executives or they've got a job that's got deadlines and things like this. And what they do is they put themselves under stress as their sort of motivation strategy. However, the problem is, is burnout. And so what happens is when you take the baseline down, you actually have more energy. You can think more clearly. You get more done. You know, we have a saying in England, which is um, uh, burning down the ha house to roast a pig, right? And so when you're stressing about things too much, you're actually putting your 
your system, if you like, um, through an unnecessary process, which will ultimately um, cause you problems. Right. And I think many people take the wrong remedies for stress. So let me give you an example. Um, new research just came out on alcohol and stress. Yes. Many people, including myself, some years ago, if I was stressed out, I'd come back from work and I would relax with a glass of red wine. Yes. But here's what that's actually doing. Alcohol is a toxin. And while that wine may taste good, it is going to disrupt your sleep at night. And I tested this. I sleep better without that glass of red wine. But I always thought, mistakenly so, that that red wine was helping me sleep. Turned out it was helping me relax in the short term. But when I went into sleep, my sleep wasn't as deep as it should be. But this is the, the, the new research that caused me to give up alcohol. Alcohol, while it can relax you in the short term, it actually causes a permanent increase in your baseline stress level. So people who drink are more stressed out when they are not on alcohol. And so we didn't know this until recently. Dr. Andrew Huberman of Stanford shared this, uh, this data recently on the Andrew Huberman podcast. Alcohol increases your baseline stress level. So all of these people who are drinking alcohol because they're feeling stress, they're putting themselves in a vicious loop. The more they drink while it causes a short dip, they're like an addict. Their baseline stress level goes up, which causes them to drink more. And it puts people into these destructive cycles. Yet this is how the modern world thinks one needs to alleviate stress. Well, you see, everybody pretty much in, in the world, Vision, is changing the way they feel by external means. Right. Drinking, drug taking, gambling, sex, shopping, uh, and food, the world's drug of choice, particularly sugar food. And you know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying those in moderation. The trouble is that far too many people are using them to excess. And, and as you rightly say, whilst it might give you a temporary relief, smoking's a good example. Literally, the, the crude chemicals in a cigarette create a, an attack on the body. So the body releases endorphins, which calms you down. So smoking certainly mm -hmm. um, uh, is a good stress control mechanism, but with a massive negative long-term health consequence. And all of the, the new research coming in shows that addiction is caused by what's called inescapable stress, right? So now that inescapable stress can be an unhappy marriage or a job you don't like. It could be living in, in an area or a ghetto where you're permanently, you know, under sort of some sort of, um, you know, threat of violence, something like that. Or, you know, people say, well, what about some of those, you know, children from rich families that end up as addicts? Where's their inescapable stress? Well, right. they were shipped off to boarding school at age six and, you know, mummy and daddy didn't really love them. And so they never feel good enough. And so the new thinking around addiction is treating the inescapable stress. There's a famous experiment called Rat Park. Mm -hmm. where well, Rat Park. Rat Park, park yeah. yeah. So what happened was these scientists, uh, they got rats addicted to morphine-laced water, uh -huh. right? and they even sweetened it to make it more, more um, uh, desirable. And the rats that were kept in these tiny little cages kept drinking the morphine-laced water, um, even though they were given the choice of regular water and morphine-laced water, they kept going for the morphine-laced water. They then took um, another proportion of the rats and they built them what they called a rat park, grass and a waterfall and rocks and, you know, and somewhere to run around, toys mm -hmm. to play in, little wheels and things. Anyway, um, after a short period of time, the rats that were allowed to go to rat park and run around, do what they want and have a good time, stopped drinking the morphine-laced water and went for the regular water. So a change in environment, either externally or internally, the thinking is that that will cause people to be less stressed and then not have to use crutches like drinking, drug, taking, exactly. gambling, sex and shopping. And I think what people don't understand about these crutches is these crutches actually can cause stress levels to increase in the long term. I think as human beings, we get seduced by short term fixes, not paying attention to the long term impact. Okay, so let, let's look at this example. I had my brain scanned about 10 months ago by Dr. Daniel Amen. He's the number one brain scan uh, doctor in the world. And he scanned the brains of so many celebrities from the Kardashians to you know everyone else. And when he gave me my brain scan results, this was September last year, I was shocked. I thought I had a healthy brain but my brain was about five years older than my biological age. And I asked Dr. Daniel Lehman, what the hell is going on? And he asked me a question, do you drink? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And he said, did you have COVID? And I said, yes. So he said, it's one of those two, it's alcohol or it's COVID. And I believed it was COVID. I truly believed it was COVID. I'd had COVID six months before and I believed, oh, it must've been Omicron, what it did to my brain. 
But, but I decided to do some experiments. So in November last year, I went on a clean diet, WildFit, which is the, the, the Mind Valley uh, clean eating system. Mm. And I no carbs, no sugars, no alcohol. And in that month of November, my brain was on fire. I was so focused, so aligned. I estimate I was earning maybe an extra hour or two per day because I could solve problems so much faster, thus freeing up time. Okay, but I went back to enjoying carbs because I enjoy the occasional baguette. I went back to drinking red wine because I live in Europe and I drink seven to 10 glasses of red wine a week. I just love red wine. It's part of living in, in, in beautiful continental Europe. Yeah. Now, after six months, um, I decided, I, I noticed that my focus was no longer as sharp as it was. My productivity had dipped from that experiment in November. So I decided to try the experiment again and I wanted to isolate was it sugar? Was it carbs? Was it exercise? Was it alcohol? So I decided to take away alcohol, but I decided to enjoy a little bit of carbs. I was in Italy and, you know, it's impossible to avoid carbs in Italy. <laughs> sure. And I, I, and again, it's impossible to ignore sugar in Italy, especially when they invented tiramisu. <laughs> but I noticed even with, now again, I wasn't overeating sugar. I wasn't overeating carbs, but I did have my intake of sugar and carbs. But the one thing that was a constant that I had removed was alcohol. And I noticed my brain was as sharp as it was in November. So now I identified the isolating factor. It was alcohol. And I realized that I've been telling myself a lie. For most of my adulthood, I thought drinking a glass of red wine was wonderful. I told myself it was healthy. It alleviates stress. Mm. It, it, it helps you relax. Turned out it was really fucking me up and hurting my brain. I'm excited to get my brain scanned again. And I believe my brain age will now be younger than my biological age. And I can feel it in terms of focus, in terms of productivity. I've never felt this sharp. But the one thing I removed is alcohol. Now, this is an example of where one can delude themselves to think that the occasional glass of red wine is helping you alleviate mm. stress, not being aware of the long-term effects. Now, you also mentioned eating. The same is true for eating. Dr. Daniel Lehman published a study in, in 2020 showing that for every extra pound or kilogram of fat we carry around our belly or our thighs, our brain cognition goes down. Wow. So if you're eating to alleviate stress, here's what's going to happen. You are going to put on fat, which is going to slow down brain functioning. If you're drinking to alleviate stress, here's what's going to happen. Your body has to process alcohol, which will lead, lead to your body having to spend energy ridding itself of that toxin, damage to your brain. Alcohol kills your brain neurons, but it also decreases things like muscle synthesis. So if you're working out, you, you have 25% less muscle development if you're drinking. You flip that around and it means if you're not drinking, you're putting on 33% more muscle. Mus muscles have the, are the highest correlation with longevity. So drinking is basically lowering your physique potential and lowering your longevity. Now, here's what all of this means. Ultimately, all of this affects your brain and your brain is where you feel that stress. If your brain is sharp, you can have a lot of complexity coming to you and you can deal with it. But if your brain capacity is going down, if you're able to only tolerate five to six hours of complexity a day, and you have an eight-hour job that's complex, your stress levels go up. Yes. So what we think is reducing our stress, eating sugar or ice cream or drinking, is actually hurting our brain and causing it to lower its capacity to process stress. And that's why modern society kind of deludes itself, and we lie to ourselves, and we take the wrong remedy for such a troubling situation. This is why I'm so excited to introduce you to Paul McKenna because of what he's about to take you on, this, this incredible journey. Now, again, guys, I'm not trying to be preachy here. I'm not asking you to give up sugar. Even I have the occasional tiramisu. I have two kids. We love Ben and Jerry's movie nights occasionally. But then I go and I work out, right? But the one thing that you may want to try is, is reducing alcohol. Not completely. I know that can be tough. But just pay attention to how you feel. But all of that aside, those are practical tips experience the hypnotherapy trance that Paul McKenna is going to take you on. And this is going to create a dramatic change in your stress level. Paul, tell us what is going on in this audio because it's, it's weird 
and crazy in a way. And I want you to break it down for us. What's going on? Okay, so hypnosis is synonymous with deep relaxation. So generally, people think of it as you know a process like meditation, where you still the mind and you get calm. Now, a, a modern hypnotist, because um, uh, you know when people think about hypnotists, they usually imagine someone with a goatee beard right. and a swinging watch. But a modern hypnotist is a sophisticated communicator. So we speak in what's called hypnotic language. And uh, I like to speak in a very gentle way because I want people to relax and go on a daydream. And whilst their mind, their conscious mind, the mind we actively think with is daydreaming, the unconscious mind, which is the larger mind, which can mm. create millions and, or if you like, billions of computations in a single second, it's like a supercomputer, is being talked to. Now, the thing is that we have, if you like, Again, if I'm going to use a computer analogy, we have programs that we run. So as a child, we learn how to shake hands, tie our shoelaces, brush our teeth. And we practice that a few times, and then we store the program, if you like, in the unconscious. So in future, we don't think about how to do it. We just do it automatically. And some of those programs that we have in fact, most of them support us, you know, opening a door, um, you know, driving a car. We don't have to think about it. We get into the car. We think about where we're going to go. But some of the programs we have don't support us. So overeating, smoking, drinking too much, etc. And they are quite rightly, as you say, usually in response to too much stress. And so what happens is you can talk to the unconscious mind, the part of the brain that, or rather part of the mind, sorry, that is uh, that is responsible for those programs. And you can ask it to fulfill all the positive intentions of a negative pattern of behavior, but without having to do that negative pattern of behavior in future. So in other words, you keep all of your ability to respond to threats or challenges or you know whatever situations where you used to get stressed, but instead of feeling overwhelmed, you feel in control. You go into a relaxed, alert uh, state of mind. And uh, this is done through the use of metaphor and story because the unconscious mind likes that. So sometimes I'll tell a story, a simple metaphor. And that's why there are weird stories that, are, that, yes. that you are stating in the audio. Yes. I mean, some of them are like Zen uh, tales, right. you know. Uh, and then some of them are, are just simple process so that, instructions. So that's a misdirection. You're, take, you're telling that story to distract the logical mind while you implant the stress-alleviating commands in the subconscious. That's right. You're overwriting the operating wow. software. Wow. Wow, because, because when you listen to this audio, and you have to listen with headphones, by the way, because there are different sounds in both ears. You see, I used to be, I was a radio broadcaster and producer in my previous life, back in the 1980s. That explains the sexy voice. Well, <laughs> but also, because I, I you know, I'm, I'm very much into the quality of sound, uh -huh. uh, was, I spent a lot of time making the sounds appear in different places. So it gave, as you say, this holographic or certainly expanded spatial uh, sense when somebody is relaxed. Relaxing. So um, I say to people, you know, even though I may, might be talking to your left brain and right brain, just let the words wash over you in a gentle way. And I try and speak to people in a way that bathes them in sound. So what happens is very often uh, people will say, oh, I sort of drifted off and I fell asleep during that trance. And that's because they needed to rest. But they wake up when I tell them to and they're full of energy and vitality. I noticed that sometimes when I listen to this audio, when I'm particularly tired, I do fall asleep. Is that going to override the effects? Oh, not at all. You see, when you're asleep, there's wow. a part of you that's still listening. Uh -huh. um, yeah, any mother with a newborn baby will tell you they can be deep to sleep. The baby cries in the other room. Bam. You know, you know what it's like when you're, um, you're at a, a, say a social gathering and you're talking away and someone says your name over the other side of the room, suddenly you tune in and hear right. it. So there's a part of the unconscious always listening, always taking in inform information. Amazing, Paul. So we can't wait to get started with the hypnotic trance. So here's what I want you guys to do. Make sure you're listening to this with headphones. I cannot stress this enough. It works with headphones because there's going to be a different input 
in your left ear and your right ear. Sit in a relaxed position. Paul, is it okay to be lying down? Or would yes, you fall asleep? absolutely. I mean, what I say to people is uh, make sure you're not uh, driving or operating machinery. You can safely relax completely. So some people listen to it uh, sitting in a say, comfortable armchair. Other people, when they're lying down. I mean, some people like to listen to it when they come in from work in the evening or other people as they fall asleep at night. I have heard tales of people listening to it on a train and falling asleep and missing their stop, but you know, that's a very rare thing. I, I, so, okay, so falling, so falling asleep is okay and don't feel stressed out about it, but ideally you want to be not so comfortable that you drift off to sleep, right? An ideal situation is you are awake. So I like listening to this sitting in a meditative posture, which is basically just like that with pillows propped up behind me, usually in bed. And that's, that's good too, right? And of course, wear comfortable clothing, take your shoes off and make sure that you're in a distraction-free environment. And again, if you're watching this or listening to this um, in, a, in, a, in a car, please make sure that you stop and pull over to the side of the street or you hit pause and listen to it when you're home. Listening to it on an airplane, is that okay? Yes, absolutely. As long as you're not flying the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I listen to this in a plane uh, and I use, I use um, AirPods Pro, which allow you to, to block out external sound so you don't hear the uh, the engine sounds of the plane okay so let's get started get a comfortable position put your headset on or your airpods plug in and we'll begin do not use this technique when driving or operating machinery only use it when you can safely relax completely Welcome to my Hypnotic Trance for Mind Valley to help you control stress, reduce anxiety, feel deep calm and everyday bliss. If you're listening in stereo, these words should be coming from the right hand side and these from the left. This mind programming process of trance is not the same as sleep, but you may become deeply relaxed. In trance, you'll still have awarenesses and you'll still be able to hear everything I say, but there will be changes, like daydreaming. Just let the sounds wash over you. You may find you don't remember it all consciously, as you simply find yourself comfortable as you follow my instructions. And during the trance or afterwards, it doesn't matter as all the changes and suggestions will continue to benefit you long afterwards. Make yourself comfortable now and pay attention to your breathing. And it doesn't matter whether your eyes are closed now or later, because if you need to awaken, you'll awaken fully alert. So now you can just let go. You're listening to this for your own reasons. And as you hear my words and become aware of sensations, you may allow yourself to relax deeply. And at the end of this process, you'll have a deeper connection to your inner calm and you'll awaken invigorated and refreshed. So for now, just notice your breathing, the gentle rise and fall that happens all by itself. And as you let your attention rest on your breathing, you can become absorbed in the detail of your perception ranging from fascinating and absorbing differences in your awareness and understanding to deep relaxation and you don't have to make any effort to think or stop thoughts just happen all by themselves and here trance does too simply experience your own perceptions and feelings enjoy whatever changes happen for you as you relax your unconscious will take you just as far into trance as is right for you now. And each trance can be different. As you focus your attention on your breathing, now my voice will go with you and simply let go and allow yourself to become more and more absorbed in the life and energy of your own body. In your mind now, Start counting backwards from 300. 300. 299. 
298, 297, 296, 295, 294. That's right, 293. And it doesn't matter if you get lost or leave a bit out or forget. Just start again in about the same place and notice you don't notice when you lose your place and drift off. Only when you return momentarily before becoming more absorbed. So as long as that part of your mind is active, it's fine that it counts. And when it doesn't count, that's fine too. You don't need to listen to this consciously. Your unconscious will hear all you need to hear. And I'd like you to notice where you feel the most comfort in your body. Most at ease. And let that feeling spread all around your body. To the top of your head and all the way to the tips of your toes. And as you begin to relax even more deeply, you might find you feel good, really good in so many ways, enjoying the process of learning new ways to enjoy life, and your life's getting better so much better in so many ways. With each thing that carries on all by itself, peace and your world around you carries on all by itself. The field connected to you can just march it one piece away and understand each other crashes the time and slow down. You can notice words. Notice noticing words. And you can notice, noticing your body can relax. Your mind can relax. And your mind has become very sensitive to my suggestions that help you most. Some so people have really like to relax on a holiday. So each of us releases by our way. With beautiful clear blue skies. We can realize gentle the sunshine is floating out of the way. We can do a the relaxing sound and see the air in the form of the waves that we can do it. And the action comes from our unconscious mind. mind. You can find new, exciting, easier ways to work, to have fun, and really enjoy life. And I'd like your unconscious mind to find new ways to achieve all the positive things that the old stress patterns used to do for you, but that do not involve unnecessary stress in future. Take time to find new ways now, so that in future it's natural for you to feel calmer, more in control and happier. Now, let your mind watch a movie of you comfortably handling all sorts of situations in your daily life in an alert, relaxed manner. Imagine them going perfectly the way you want them to. Imagine them being challenging and see how capable you look no matter how things are going. And when the movie looks really good, float into yourself in that movie and feel how good it feels to feel calm and in control as you imagine things going perfectly the way you want them to. Imagine them being challenging because we can't control everything that ever happens that you can find you feel more emotional equilibrium in future, whatever is going on around you. Sensations come and go, and the peaceful comfort is always there with you. Because you'll remember that whatever's happening around you, you're always free to find your inner peace, 
if you experience stressful feelings, expand your awareness to include the whole of your body and your inner peace. There's always peace within us deep down, underneath the tension. You can feel calm in the center of yourself, as well as the awarenesses of your body changes. As you hear these words, you can feel your body, and as you feel, be aware of the position of your body, and as you notice that, you may wonder where you are aware from, and if you wish, you can lose that sense of place from whence you were aware, and drift into your thinking, your imagery, and let it carry you like a leaf floating through the air, landing on a stream, and carried by a current under a bridge, out again into the light, and drifting all the things that faster are less so now, further and how help. much easier it is, closer, feel good to the great notion of tranquility, handle things easily, easily and as you can relax, like eddies and give you the energy to sort out, and then the mind ever's on to do each downstream and feel the joy that you always have become this within you. You can find your because you can always bring your mind and enjoy to calm the inner certainty that you can. Body. Success is a natural part of your life, and you can make the changes you need now. Breathing happens for you from the moment you're born until the moment you die. Life breathes you, and you come along for the ride, and you can enjoy it here in the present moment. You can release the worries that tug you into the future or the past and feel your breathing reminding you you're alive here and now because your senses will remind you of the miracle of being alive here and now and with each moment this miracle is renewed you're alive here and now and let your breathing remind you of this. And each time you hear this, you'll understand my words differently. Because on each occasion, you bring new knowledge, new insight into yourself or your situation, so that you can take a bit more each time from my words. Here, you'll begin to recognize how every sign of tension is an invitation to relax and let go, and you can become interested, fascinated, to discover how much more is possible. And you don't know, consciously yet, what will be the most useful result of these changes, because each time you let go into trance, you have the time to reconnect to your inner resources, Your emotional signals have a function. They're part of your intelligence. They send you messages. And as you learn to understand them better and better, they can recalibrate and allow you to experience more peace and contentment as you learn from the wisdom of your own feelings. I'd like you to dream now of waking up in the future the not too distant future and your unconscious mind will help you it may be next week you're dreaming of or it may be next month and just let yourself dream of the time now that you have all the inner calm you need and you can look back on stress and know that it's left behind in the past and as you notice you awake in the future all that you see and hear and feel lets you know that all is well and the future is good. Look around and look out for all the signs and indications of success. Let yourself enjoy all this and the feeling of achievement and 
contentment that goes with it. Deep within you is more strength, more power than your everyday mind ever dreams of. And here, now in trance, you can know and soak up that inner strength, love, power, and determination. And I'd like your unconscious mind to help you notice more and more happy, joyous moments every day. It will reset your perceptual filters to notice more often where you're feeling joy, even small joys. And as you notice more joyous moments every day, I'd like your unconscious mind to amplify those joyous feelings and create strong joyous feelings more and more often so you feel more and more joyful every day because you get more of what you focus on and as you feel grateful for all that's wonderful in your life you feel better and better to solve problems and challenges. I'd like to thank that part of your mind that worries for doing all the good things that it does for you, protecting you, helping you. And now, I'd like your unconscious mind to find new, more comfortable ways to achieve all the positive things that that part was doing for you. You might not even be aware of what those new ways are going to be. Now, as your unconscious mind decides what they are, and then check that it's okay for you to have those new ways, and only using ways to which there'll be no objection, and integrating those new ways into your experience and behavior at just the rate and speed that's appropriate. As you sleep at night, you'll sleep well and deeply, and the process of becoming calmer and healthier will continue, and the imaginative genius part of your unconscious mind will help you face problems and discover helpful solutions. that your emotional symptoms are walking through the jungle to make you feel more tired and the tigers are alive. You ran to get away from and you'll find that so you're able to feel rounded for the edge of particular reason as he fell because you grabbed hold of the tree and there you searched and as he looked up he could see the tiger and looking down, down the tunnel was where you fell in beneath him. Another tiger appeared and came so cold he felt a little dirty on his face. So it was too much like conscious right through the tree room and he was always going to feel it to his right. He saw it every fly to a crevice so that you there he could see a bee's nest out of the flag with honey all the time. He reached out and tasted some of the honey on his face that we've asked the honey conscious to make it so. You will feel better about your life every day because you feel so much calmer and happier. As you begin to find yourself thinking of yourself as a happy, confident, resourceful person repeatedly, new experiences will begin to produce the most wonderful results in your life. Now, I'd like you to stop a moment and imagine that time, let's say several weeks from now, and you've been listening repeatedly to this relaxing trance, practicing tenaciously thinking of yourself in that way. Now you're noticing some wonderful positive changes in your life. What part of your new life are you enjoying most? Give yourself a sense of that pleasure now. 
amplifying the feelings of that pleasure. Because you know by doing what's good for you, by doing what works, through practice and listening repeatedly, you can achieve the things you want. Your mind will generate creative ways to overcome obstacles because you begin to see yourself as a more resourceful, capable person and you enjoy challenges as you realize they make you stronger and wiser and you get value from your achievements. Because deep within you is more strength more resilience, more power than your everyday mind imagines. And here, in trance, you can get to know that inner strength, flexibility and resilience. Yes, yes but I has but thoughts to feel calm and comfortable to the right away. As you his neighbor said, how to without suffering moved but defined he simply said so this present be moment. A few days later, there's deep trauma in you, even to when you experience with it. difficulties, stress, or suffer joy. So it's good for this and this and reply for yourself said deep down maybe you have come the next day and found the sun that I tried to cry in one of the wild and the natural sign flows through him death and dream continues with an able to see. offer their sympathy each moment the father again the energy of life maybe and each moment next week is an opportunity to appreciate the richness it on press gang all the young the endless the flow of life they rejected kind of son because in the birth flow when the self is told him how lucky he was and each more found of new life is created and you will be more capable balanced and relaxed Soon, you'll begin to recognize how every manifestation of tension is an invitation to relax, to let go, and you'll establish new powerful habits which move you from stress to comfort every time you bring your awareness to the manifestation of stress. And I'd like your unconscious mind to reinforce every positive thought that you've ever had about yourself. Because all is well. And it's important to be alert. And it's important to relax. And you can ask your unconscious mind to let you know very clearly when you can safely and usefully relax. So that you notice the sweet, soft feeling in your muscles and find your inner peace whenever you relax. You can let yourself relax all the way down to the level you really need. And when you awaken, you can awaken with bright, delightful alertness because your body can do that and as you become awake you can find the wish to be active and you'll find yourself enjoying that. We know we can all daydream, we can all sleep and we can all wake up although we don't consciously know how we wake up. Yet we do, and you can awake now, as I count backwards, refreshed and alert, in touch with your inner peace, and ready to express the energy in your body. Wake up now, calm and confident. Ten. Nine. Eight. Gradually awakening. Seven. Six. Five, four, maybe you'll want to stretch and a yawn as you wake up. Three, two, one. Wow. I mean, just wow. Every time I listen to that audio, when I come out of it, I 
I'm in a different state. I compare it to the the parachuting down that happens after you're on plant medicine. You know, when you do ayahuasca or psilocybin, and as you're coming out of that trip and you feel so wonderful and you step back into waking reality, it feels like that. You know, for me, it's like all the stresses, the knots and the, you know, the tensions in my mind, I can feel them wow. uh, unwinding. Yeah. And, and it's like a, um, a beautiful, as you say, floating feeling. And, and if I have burdens and worries, they, they just sort of float away. Or I begin to see solutions because I'm, I'm not in that panic mode right. anymore. And my mind is clear to see solutions. And, and it's almost like a sort of a, a natural high. Mm. I feel a bit high on life when I listen to that particular trance. I, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Now, many of you had a great success with that audio. And I know you're listening to it here in this episode. Now, if you want the audio as a standalone, so you can play it and listen to it anytime, here's how to get the audio, how to own it completely free. Just go to mindvalley.com forward slash hypnotherapy. This is the website where Mindvalley and McKenna run our hypnotherapy coaching certification. So yes, thousands of people get certified by Paul McKenna. We open up this certification school once a year where you learn to become a hypnotherapist to change people's lives. But go to that website and you will see a sign-up form to get the, the hypnotic trance for bliss to remove stress and anxiety audio. Put in your email address and we will send you a link where you can download the audio directly. You will basically get the audio on your Mind Valley app. And on the app, all you got to do is click on meditations. It's called Hypnotic Trance Bliss. Okay, but go to mindvalley.com forward slash hypnotherapy, sign up and we'll send you all the directions and we'll unlock the audio for your particular email. So sign up with the same email that you're using for the Mind Valley app. And on that website, you can also learn about Paul McKenna's hypnotherapy certifications. They are so popular. I'm a McKenna certified hypnotherapist, and it's changed my life and the lives of my friends. For example, Paul, I, I haven't shared this with you, but I just hypnotized a friend to give up vaping, someone I really cared about, but had a disgusting vaping habit. It took 30 minutes. It's now been one month. She has not touched a vape wow. again. God, that's right? great, isn't it? And and I I I didn't do this because I wanted to charge money for it, although many people make a lot of money from mm. it. I did this because I just like being of service to my friends and my family. And it's just absolutely wonderful, mind-blowingly wonderful. You know, I got to say, of, of all the things I've done in recent years, the Mind Valley Hypnotherapy course is my favorite uh, Thank thing. Thank you. And it really is because uh, in four months, you get all of the latest psychological technology, hypnotherapy, neuro-linguistic programming, the psychosensory technique, havening. You learn to use those. And, uh, and not only can you change people's lives, you can, as you mentioned, a lot of people make a very good living from doing this. But right now, the world needs more hypnotherapists. And, you know, I'm just so excited by what we're achieving together. Yeah. Paul, any closing words? Well, just... Um, as ever, it's always such a pleasure talking to you. You know, you're such a dynamic, fascinating person, Vishan. I love Mind Valley. You know, I love being part of the Mind Valley family, and you know, I just think that uh, we're going to be able to change lives um, with this program. People watching, uh, you know, will go and uh, give it a try and might be very pleasantly surprised. I mean, the first time I got hypnotized in the 1980s, I was very skeptical. I didn't believe it was going to work on me. And Bam, I felt so good. And so I became obsessed with it. And for those people who want to learn to be a hypnotherapist in four months and be able to cure people from their addictions like smoking or overeating, become confident, overcome phobias, sleep well, all the sorts of things that hypnotherapists treat, will be able to do that using the latest psychological technology, which is available now. Beautiful. And I want to say I'm so happy that that this happened between us. Uh, I got, as I said, I got acquainted to Paul's work because I had him hypnotize me to get me out of this illness that would have required me required me to be on prescription medication for the rest of my life, right? And it's gone, completely gone. And that blew me away because it took 20 minutes right here in your study. Yeah. Freaking hell. <laughs> and, and right now, I am proud to say I'm on zero prescription medication because I've learned how much my mind influences my body. And I talk to my body and I hypnotize myself using your techniques to always have the right beliefs which are influencing how my body heals and rejuvenates itself. Thank you, Paul. You're a dear friend. And thank you, Mind Valley fans. Thank you.